YouTube, good morning. So again, we are back. We are not stopping. Just because this channel has been demonetized does not mean that we are not going to bring you the information when it comes to what you need to know when it comes to the Second Amendment and gun rights in the state of California and nationwide. Big news today. A few days ago, I made a short video discussing how the ATF proposed rules regarding 80% firearms, personally manufactured firearms, and the definition of a frame or receiver was set to go live soon. This was something that I wanted to wait on talking about until the day was actually here, because I feel many people have talked about this topic a lot, but I worry that some people might have lost the fire and the passion when it comes to actually making your voice heard about how we should oppose this ruling. This would affect your ability to manufacture a firearm for your own personal use. It would potentially require the serialization of personally manufactured firearms at the cost of you and the gun manufacturers. This is gonna be a huge thing that if it passed would absolutely devastate the firearms market in ways that you cannot quite grasp just yet. I will be talking about those and how you can actually make your voice heard when it comes to actually the process of making your voice heard and some specific things that you need to be aware of so that you can properly ensure that the ATF has to acknowledge your comment. Because if we do this right, we can stop this. We stopped the pistol brace ban previously, and I believe that this can be stopped as well. Now, I do want to say thank you to the sponsor of this channel, 80% Arms. When they found out that I was demonetized and that this was going through, they were very quick to come and support me again. They have supported me in the past. I've used their Gen 2 Easy Jig and now their Gen 3 Easy Jig, which made it super easy for me to assemble legally my very own ghost gun. If you're into ghost guns, if you are into the hobby, if you're into tinkering, this is definitely gonna be the thing for you. Their Gen 3 Easy Jig can do AR-15, AR-9, and 308 AR-10 lower receivers. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm gonna have links on the Odyssey channel, not in YouTube description anymore. So if you want to see some links to that kind of stuff and maybe some more things, check me out on Odyssey because YouTube does not want me to link to those kinds of things. So if you want to see me in a place where all my future and all my past videos are uploaded, odyssey.com. Check it out, link in the description. Now we are hopped over to the regulations.gov website and I'm gonna actually show you a few links that we're gonna be discussing in the topic today that will help you kind of get a better idea of how to properly submit a comment and how to make your voice heard without the ATF having to disregard your opinion. Because if you do this right, they have to acknowledge and comment on every single comment that is valid. Now, if we go to this first page and right here where it says comment, if you click that, it will open up this page here where you can either attach a PDF or Word document, I believe, or type directly into here. My personal recommendation, just for the sake of ease, is going to be recommending that you type this on something like a Word document and then attach it. You're gonna need to choose whether you're an individual and you're gonna give some of your personal information, but it's important to note that when it comes to actually writing the comment, you can't actually curse whatsoever. So people asked me the last time to provide a template Here's why I'm not gonna provide you a direct template. When you provide one of those direct templates, they treat each one of those comments as the same comment. They just kind of, they don't have to directly respond to each one if it's kind of one of those mass targeted email. Filling one of those out, which I'm sure the FPC and the GOE will provide is good. You should do that as well. But what you should also do is make your own and it can be short, it can be fairly easy. And I'm gonna break down how I think you should do that. First of all, don't cuss because if you cuss and are offensive in your actual comment, they can just throw it out and they don't have to read or respond to it. Start with, hello, my name is, provide your full name, you live at, provide your address, and I know that seems redundant because you're gonna have to fill that information out when you submit your comment anyway, but the ATF wants that in there. I am concerned with docket number, boom, I am a, provide what you do for a job and that you maybe enjoy making your own guns or shooting firearms or maybe you own personally these types of guns. You would say this proposed rule would affect me an individual in the following ways at which point in the same paragraph, you would provide one to two of these rules that you feel would affect you the most. I'm gonna talk about those specifically in just a minute. I'm just kind of giving you a breakdown of how I would recommend you actually write this. Elaborate on rule one in one paragraph, 
and then elaborate on rule two in another paragraph. If you want some good information regarding how to actually get going, I think this is an excellent article here from D and Fringe. Um, I follow them on Instagram. They seem like pretty cool people. Don't know too much about them, but this specifically, I'm gonna have a link to in the Odyssey channel. Let's read some of these summaries that they've provided because I think these are pretty good. The definition of a firearm, currently the definition of a firearm is any weapon, including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may be readily converted to expel a projectile by action of explosive or the frame or receiver of such weapon, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer or destructive device such as such term does not include an antique firearm. So what they're add, intending to add would add designed to or may readily be converted to expelling a... Pro, uh, the ATF proposal would add designed to or may be readily converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. So, well, what does that really mean? Well, I think a lot of this is really targeting these 80% firearms or these build by shoot kits, definitely, but also an 80% lower. Think about what they might consider readily. So, well, all polymer 80 kits, like the ones that were confiscated last year, that's definitely gonna be the ones that are gonna be targeted specifically. Now, when they discuss readily convertible, one of the things that they mention is whether or not a machine shop, a fully staffed and fully equipped machine shop could get it done in under eight hours. Well, that's basically, um, a solid chunk of aluminum <laughs> uh, could be turned into a, a fully functioning firearm in under eight hours. So uh, when they talk about that, I think that's very concerning because readily convertible, even if they provide specific examples, would basically turn every single thing that could be turned into a firearm into legally a firearm. Two pipes at Home Depot that are 12 gauge in diameter with a little tack at the end, that's a slam fire shotgun. You can make one of those in about 20 minutes. Would all piping have to be sold to through an FFL if you are a gun owner or gun enthusiast? That's pretty concerning to me because readily convertible, they say that they're providing a definition, but it seems hard to truly understand what readily convertible is. Then they wanna change the definition of a frame or receiver. Now, the definition of a frame or receiver currently Federally, when it comes to an AR-15 style firearm, the lower receiver doesn't actually meet the definition of a firearm. And this is one of the big things that have been coming up. Now, they go on to say that this would not, the changing of the definition of a firearm would not affect firearms that are currently on the market because the whole split receiver, they said that they would provide a list of firearms that are currently on the market that do have a part that holds the bolt, bolt carrier, breech block, cylinder, firing pin, striker, slide rails. Now, any one of those things, if it includes one of them, could be considered the firearm itself. But for the firearms that are already on the market where they've determined that one specific receiver part is the actual gun, like in the case of the SIG P320 or the AR-15 or the SCAR, they've made determinations on what the firearm is there in that case. However, this really comes into play for new firearms. Now think about the people that are currently trying to develop 3D printed firearms or homemade firearms or any firearms manufacturer, especially if they live overseas, it gets a lot more difficult. Think about the manufacturers that are trying to manufacture a new firearm that operates on a similar system of a split receiver, but is not a currently manufactured firearm. Now, until the ATF provides a very specific determination on that one gun, you wouldn't know what the receiver is and therefore would have to serialize and treat every single part that contains one of those parts like the, house, the housing or holding structure for the hammer, bolt, bolt carrier, breech block, cylinder. Until the ATF makes a determination on every new firearm that hits the market, you can't actually know what the firearm is and isn't. Then it would add a category for partially complete, disassembled, or interoperable frame or receiver. To determine this status, the director may consider any available instructions, guides, templates, jigs, equipment, tools, or marketing materials. For clarification, partially complete for purposes of this definition means a forging, casting, printing, extrusion, machined body, or similar article that has reached a stage in manufacture where it is clearly identifiable as an unfinished component part of a weapon. The director may consider is really what is kind of concerning because the ATF director could potentially be someone like David Chipman. Do we want that guy determining what's a gun and what isn't? I don't know. I personally don't. That's a lot of power to put into one person who isn't an actual legislator. 
Again, this is not Congress signing laws. This is actually the ATF trying to exert their force of power. They know that they can't pass these laws through Congress because they don't have the votes, so they're trying to use these executive bodies to do it for them. Marketing materials are irrelevant, you know? The FGC-9 is a perfect example of a firearm that's completely 3D printed or made from parts that are not in any way regulated as firearm parts. So would filament sold with the actual STL files for the FGC-9, would that be considered a kit? Would that be partially complete? I don't know, it's it's kind of concerning to me because whether or not there are guides, templates, jigs, or equipment, or tools, I think that's totally irrelevant. Just because you can, information is not illegal. And all of this is just the information of how to do something. CNC machines exist. And if you own a CNC machine and you also own the files for an AR-15 lower receiver, would that be considered, would that make you a gunsmith? I don't know, I don't think so, but I don't want the director of the ATF to be the sole determining factor of that. Now here's the big part. When it comes to privately manufactured firearms, when an FFL, meaning a gun, own, gun store, actually comes in contact with a privately manufactured firearm, if they want to actually take that into their possession and work on it, modify it, seracote it, replace the barrel, replace the trigger, do whatever it is that they want to do to that firearm for someone who has manufactured their own firearm, the FFL would have to legally mark that and engrave it with the new definition of what is a proper engraving. It's something to do with their FFL number and their log books. So every FFL that comes in contact with a privately manufactured firearm that they have to do some work on or maybe want to take it in for inventory, whatever it is, if they come in contact with that, they have to then engrave it. The problem is, is not every gun store out there has a laser engraver that can properly actually mark these receivers to the proper depth. This is something that would add a level of cost. Either the FFL is going to have to then take that personally manufactured firearm and have it engraved with their serial number on it, or buy a laser engraver, or no longer be allowed to do business with people who bring in firearms that they made themselves. This is gonna provide a big burden on a lot of people because if they aren't serialized, they're requiring them to be serialized. Now, this doesn't actually help solve anything because there is no registration of these firearms, these personally manufactured firearms. So even if you put a number on it, even if this FFL were to go into their logbooks and physically write down the number that they wrote on the firearm, that doesn't do anything. If that firearm turns up at the scene of the crime, it does nothing. All it does is says that at one point it was at this gun store. Because what if that gun was stolen? What if the person just removes the serial number? Criminals don't care about these laws. These laws will only affect good law-abiding people. Now, do you think that the FFLs are gonna do this for free? No, it's probably gonna be like 40, 50 bucks to get this done for every single firearm. Is that something that's gonna be a burden to many people? Yes. Every single person that's manufactured a firearm is either going to have to pay that fee if they want to have someone work on it, or they're just gonna not be able to bring it into someone because they won't accept it. Now the last part is when it regards to these kits that FFLs would need to serialize. So if an FFL, for non-FFL manufacturers of firearm parts kits containing a part designed as a firearm frame or receiver, ATF anticipates there would be significant impact on these individual companies, but notes that the overall industry impact would also be minimal. Based on current marketing related to the unregulated sale of certain firearm parts kits, ATF anticipates that these non-FFLs would either become FFLs to sell regulated frames or receivers or complete weapons, and then would take a loss in revenue to sell unrelated items or parts kits that do not contain a frame or receiver. Here's some big points that I think most people can probably hit on. If you are a personally, if you are someone that manufactures firearms for your own personal use and enjoyment, this would affect your ability to take a firearm to an FFL because not all FFLs that you might want to work with to have something done are in a position to actually properly engrave that firearm, meaning you would have to either pay to have someone else do it, drive further, it would provide monetary impact for you, or it would affect your ability to actually continue to enjoy that. If you are in a state like me, in the state of California, if these kits, if these 80% were to be considered firearms at this point, what that would mean is that if I wanted to buy one, I would have to go to my gun store, 
and I would have to do a background check. Now the problem is, is that there doesn't currently exist in the state of California a background check system that would allow me to actually buy that. So this would temporarily completely restrict my ability to buy one of these kits because the background check system that the ATF would require if these 80% kits were actually legally considered a firearm. Now in the state of California, if I wanted to do that, first I would have to get a firearm safety certificate, which would cost me $25. Then I would have to pay the background check fee, which would be approximately $37. If AB 123, you know, and if some other bills go through, it would be even more expensive. Then I'm gonna have to pay the FFL transfer fee if they are sending it in from out of state to that gun store that I wanna transfer it to locally, which is probably gonna be about another hundred bucks. Then they're gonna have to properly serialize it if it has not already been serialized, which is most likely gonna be baked into the cost of it, meaning that it costs more than it would be if I just had it sent to my house. So there are fees that are involved in doing this kind of thing, especially if you live in the state of California. Now, if I'm in possession of one of these currently and they are now considered a firearm, am I now in possession of a unlicensed firearm or a unregistered firearm in the state of California? I think there's a whole lot of interplay with state laws that they aren't considering with this. So if you live in a specific state, maybe consider the fact that if these were to be considered firearms or if these parts that previously were not considered a firearm, like an upper receiver on an AR or another future type of firearm, if that was to change, how would that affect your ability to actually get them into your state? Because many people would have to pay exorbitant fees and do background checks that the system is not currently designed to handle and would not be designed to handle. Because according to the California Department of Justice, adding a drop-down menu for other when it comes to the type of firearm being rifle, pistol, shotgun, other, if they wanted to add other, the California Department of Justice said that would take them over 10 months to do. How hard do you think it would be for them to add an entire background check system for unfinished firearm frames? I'm guessing about 800 years. So there's a lot of things to consider when you are actually writing your a uh, little page about hello my name is I live at this you know I'm concerned with this docket number and again I'm gonna have this template in the description so that you can kind of help write it yourself the time is now we stopped this before with the pistol brace ban and I think we can stop this now but the problem is is my concern is that many people might have lost the interest and lost the passion and the desire because they've been so inundated with what's going on so I'm urging you this video is most likely going to tank since I've been demonetized. So what I'm asking is that you please help share the word, share these links to the actual federal registrar so that you can make a comment, so that other people can make a comment. This needs to absolutely blow the fuck up. Thank you. Now, you guys all know the drill. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous and whatnot, but I really wanna do say thank you to everyone that has supported me. Um, with being demonetized, it's kind of a crazy time for this channel right now, but like I said, I ain't fucking leaving. Um, they can't get rid of me that easy. Um, I'm gonna keep making videos. Hopefully I can get re-monetized for the other perks, not just the monetary gain, but I again wanna say thank you to 80% Arms for sponsoring me through this video and sponsoring this channel. Having their support is huge odyssey.com my channel which will be linked below will have some links that you can check out that maybe you can uh, do some things or some stuff but uh, cannot leave those links on youtube anymore um, thank you everyone i appreciate your support